Welcome back to our special show, Lessons in Investing. I have with me investing guru Mark Mobius, who is a man with a new mission. He's the author of this book, uh, Invest for Good. And what he's saying is that when you're investing, don't just look at balance sheets. Uh, you have to look at whether companies are environmentally conscious, socially conscious, and if they have good governance. Now, you know, uh, Mark, uh, let me come back to the growth issue because growth is at a premium, uh, is not available in global economies. And we got a shocker in terms of uh, the GDP number being as low as 5%, lowest in six years. So do you think that, uh, uh, you know, this is a worry in India now? Let me first ensure that growth is there. There's no question in my mind that from a long-term perspective, India will continue to grow a good pace. Uh, yes, we have a hiccup now mainly because a lot of the reforms have not been moving fast enough and there was a lot of confusion regarding taxation. And by the way, when we talk about governance, we're not only, not only talking about corporate governance, but we're also talking about state governance, government okay. governance. Okay. In other words, the, the government has got to apply consistent policies that would be acceptable yes. to the society and will help the society grow. Mm -hmm. And I think that is going to be happening uh, with the Modi re revolution that you're seeing here in, in India. Okay, uh, but what's the sense since you are uh, such a man with your feet on the ground talking to companies, uh, what gives you a feeling that uh, uh, this is a transient phase? Do you think this 5% growth or 8% nominal growth uh, can be corrected quickly? I think it can be corrected within a year or two mm -hmm. uh, with new policies coming in new infrastructure spending by the government, and most importantly, uh, clarity on taxation. Mm -hmm. This is the biggest concern that I've been hearing uh, among businessmen, both domestically and internationally. What is the government regarding, the government policy regarding capital gains tax and other taxes? Let's make it very clear and consistent so that they're not uh, many, many changes coming along the way. Okay. Very important. Uh, you know, we're also seeing a, a lot of technological disruption. I mean, automobiles are not selling. We understand that's only partly because of uh, people not having money, but also because, uh, you know, there is a, a electrical disruption, electrical vehicle disruption, the millennial disruption. Uh, so, so do you think that these will pass or are we in for the long haul with sedate growth? The internet revolution, the technological revolution as well. I mean, the internet is just one small part of this whole technological, uh, technological revolution, which is incredible. It's hitting every country in the world, particularly India, because India, starting from a low base in many industries, yes. is going to be leapfrogging into much higher technology. That means disruption. It means people being laid off from their work. It means new people being hired to take new positions. So there's a lot of this that's taking place in India that will be very, very important going forward. For that reason, companies are gonna to have to pay a lot of attention to what the new generation is saying because they are internet savvy. Okay. They know what's going on. They have more information that we never had when we were young. Okay. So you have a new generation that's creating a revolutionary environment both in terms of their behavior and in terms of their expectations from government and companies. Okay, but uh, is the new generation as ESG savvy? I mean, our older generation uh, were liberals. I mean, all over the world, uh, Trump is very different from the previous liberal sure. uh, presidents. Uh, li liberalism is probably taking a back foot. Uh, do you fear that the millennials will be as worried about ESG? The millennials are even more worried and they're more concerned. One of the things we found among the new generation is that they're very aware of the need for improvements in the environment, improvements in the social fabric of society, and improvement in governance in general terms. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the hopeful signs. The new generation is very, very aware. Okay. Well, that's good. Uh, to come back to uh, the growth uh, issue, and you spoke about taxes. Recently, the Indian government rolled back that extra tax on foreign investors registered as trusts. Doesn't that set your mind right, uh, set your mind at rest with respect to tax issues? It was a very good move and it's very helpful. But you must remember, uh, foreign investments take a longer term view. They'll say, look, uh, is this for real? How long this will, <laughs> will okay. there be another change? So I think it'll take maybe a half a year for this to sort of sink in 
and people to realize, okay, this is going to be a change for this for the longer term, and then it'll be coming back in again. Okay, uh, what about uh, uh, you know the. Uh, fact that uh, the minute the current uh, government has a minister for water resources I mean uh, Narendra Modi has even in his previous term spoken about cleanliness Swachhata as we call it that was one of his missions in India uh, d does the current government tick the boxes for ESG for you well that's one that's a very good example of where they have someone in charge of water resources because it's so critical when you look in the environment mm -hmm. water resources are one of the key points that you have to focus on. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they are selecting people to look diligently at these areas is very, very hopeful. Mm -hmm. And of course, that leads into hygiene, it leads into fewer diseases, it leads into many, many other things that are very important for society. Okay. You know, as part of this, uh, the government also has been concerned about growth. And one of the things they've recently announced is that we've this about 20 public sector banks and they're trying to reduce the number and some m mergers have been announced. Would you think that will make a big difference or is that a very marginal kind of reform? No, I think that will make a very big difference because uh, first of all, let's talk about regulation. It's going to be much, much easier to regulate fewer banks than all these smaller banks mm -hmm. that are in the hinterland that be very difficult to access. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one good point. The other good point is that these banks will be stronger their capital base will be stronger. So they'll be able to make loans mm -hmm. in a more objective and uh, aggressive way. Mm -hmm. And I think that is very okay. critical. Okay. Now, uh, you know, there are a lot of people saying, you know, weak plus weak will remain a big, weak bank. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, and many of the banks have uh, had this huge NPA problem or bad loan problem. Uh, would you want banks to be recast completely in terms of uh, ownership, governance, uh, selection, power of the board? Very, very important, and that's why I hope that the government will think about privatizing more of these banks. When I talk about privatizing, I don't say that the government gets out completely. In other words, the government can still remain 51% majority shareholder, but then sell the rest of the shares to the public so that they can be more uh, governance. In other words, they can be more surveillance of what's going on in the bank. I think that's very, very important. Okay. Uh, you know, they have announced a few other things uh, in terms of uh, a quicker repayment of the GST input credit, uh, faster payments coming from government, uh, uh, and uh, some investment ideas as well. You think this is enough to remove, uh, to trough out the economy? Or do you think this is going to be more U shaped? You know, we'll be slow for a longer. Uh, that's one very important element, particularly for the smaller businessmen. Uh, mm -hmm. They need that cash, and the faster you can get it back to them, the better. Mm -hmm. And that's why Modi's programs of uh, digitization, mm -hmm. of getting people to uh, use digital economy, mm -hmm. digital resources, yes. is very, very important. Because mm -hmm. that means that monies can be flowing much, much faster back to these smaller businesses. Okay. Uh, well, uh, when you are looking at ESG companies, I mean, what has been the uh, uh, availability of companies in India? Is it more difficult to find uh, socially, uh, environmentally responsible governance standard companies in India vis-a-vis -vis most other emerging markets? How would India compare? India is good in the sense that uh, the great thing is that most businessmen here are aware of what's happening globally because they speak and read English. So they can pick up the Financial Times or they can pick newspapers from Singapore or Hong Kong or wherever in the world in the U.S. and understand what's going on globally and be aware of the ESG. So it's very easy for us to go into a company in India and talk about ESG because they've heard about it. They know about sustainability. Uh, in other countries, sometimes it's more difficult because there's a language barrier. Mm. So I would say India is maybe a little better than others, but there are problems everywhere. You know, we have to really search out okay. the better companies. Uh, do you think the capital markets regulator himself or herself could give some extra points for uh, uh, to the mutual funds? After all, they, they are the regulator of the mutual funds. Is there any way the regulator can be involved in ensuring governance standards or in ensuring that mutual funds ensure governance standards? That's a great idea. And in fact, uh, it would be wonderful if SEBI could uh, institute a program to rank mm -hmm. uh, funds as regards to the ESG uh, availability. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, actually, SEBI has been a very good watchdog. Uh, recently, we had instances of uh, probably some funds giving almost like equity capital to promoters. 
and they have come down very heavily on, mm -hmm. uh, on them because those problems are surfacing. They are not companies, uh, promoters with the best governance standards. But uh, quite separately, uh, when you look, survey the Indian terrain now, uh, are you, where, is the, where is the investment idea? The GDP numbers are showing that consumption has slowed to 3% and investment, gross fixed capital formation has slowed to 4%. So where are you looking for ideas? Actually, see, it's in those areas where the opportunities are. Okay. In fact, I was just talking to an investor this morning, and, and they said, gee, this is a great time to be investing because so many of these companies are down. Uh, the news is not good as regards to capital investment in terms of growth and all the rest of the factors. But we know from a long-term point of view, these companies will probably do very well. Okay. So what we want to do is look at these companies in detail, find out how their capital structure is is it safe to get in are the governance standards good do they listen to shareholders are they paying dividends these are factors that we look at and say okay they may be slow now but going forward they'll be a good company once the economy picks up again so is mobius capital partners now very actively looking at buying have you already uh, put in some of the cash you've got oh definitely india is uh, right at the top of our our country breakdown for the funds. Okay, and you prefer consumer goods or you prefer banks? We like consumer goods, but we also like some of the industrial companies, uh, some companies that are making goods for infrastructure, mm -hmm. because as you know, the government is going to be spending a lot of money on infrastructure. Okay, well, uh, since I have an investment guru with me, I just need to, uh, I mean, I'm sure even government policy makers are uh, watching the show and wanting to listen to you. How much of the slowdown is, uh, you know, endogenous, is our own making? And how much is because the world is anyway slowing? It's, I would say, 50-50. Okay. It's 50% uh, is problems internally, and 50% is the external environment, the China-U.S. Mm. trade yes. uh, dispute and so forth, which, by the way, I try to emphasize to people, is an opportunity for India. Okay. Because India can begin taking over some of the manufacturing that has been going on in China. And India is probably one of the, well, really the only other country that has the manpower mm. to be able to make Apple computers and uh, uh, all kinds of other equipment yes. that is needed for the Americans. So I think there's a great opportunity but here. But you did say 50% is an endogenous uh, problem. What, can, what do you want to see set right? Clarity on taxation, yes, number one. And in fact, reduction of taxation, mm -hmm. because this is one of the things that you have to realize that if you, uh, you know, the famous Laffer curve, if you <laughs> reduce taxation, you're going to get better growth. And at the end, you'll probably get more, more money coming into the government. So that's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, a faster exposure of what's happening on the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I know as I travel around India, I see lots of infrastructure, mm -hmm. but nobody knows about it. It hasn't been publicized. This is something that has to be publicized. And then bringing in foreign investors into the infrastructure projects mm -hmm. so they, they can add their expertise and knowledge of what, uh, what is a good way to operate. Okay. those areas okay well of course you're going to invest for good and invest in ESG companies but give us an idea in the next two years what kind of return on uh, equity can you expect we're looking at about 15 percent return uh, okay. over the longer Nifty term could be 15 percent higher you hope I hope <laughs> and don't forget when we say invest for good we say for good meaning long term yes in other words taking a long-term view not a one-year, two-year, but a five-year view. Okay. This is an extremely interesting book. Mark Mobius, it was a pleasure speaking with you. And may your tribe increase. May there be more investors who are conscious that they are investing in companies that are en environmentally conscious, socially uh, aware, and are opting for good governance. Uh, uh, let's, uh, how much is ESG now? Is it like uh, uh, 25 trillion? Oh, or at least, at least, and growing very rapidly. Okay. Well, may your tribe increase and may there be more trillions poured into ESG companies. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.